Hey, it's Ivan from the EV Stock channel here, and today I'll be taking a deep dive into battery recycling. To help me shed some light on this topic, I've got Chris Reed from Neo Metals. So Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ivan. My pleasure. Right. So within the Tesla community, we're all speculating about battery day. And one of the main speculations is, will Tesla start a battery recycling company? You know, there's talk about JB Strawbull and Redwood Materials. So I just want to start her off with this and maybe get your thoughts on that topic. Sure. Well, look, I'm sure all the, uh, the Tesla Arty would like to know that uh, Tesla does in fact have its own recycling program at the moment. Um, the legislation in California dictates that if you, if you produce a, a lithium bearing product that you, you have to take it back you have to recycle it or fund the recycling. So to the best of my knowledge, um, Tesla has a relationship there with the Kendersky brothers, I think, that take the old battery packs up to British Columbia and they're recycled there. Kinsbursky brothers? I've got to admit, that's the first time I've heard of this company and I had no idea that they were currently recycling Tesla batteries. So deep dive into Kinsbursky brothers coming up soon. But for now, let's jump back into the interview. Can you just tell us a bit about your uh, battery recycling project? Yeah, sure. So we'd, uh, we developed the, the Mount Marion Lithium project with Gan Feng and Minres in 2015. We started looking at battery recycling in 2016. And so we've gone through, you know, developing our own flow sheets, scaling up. We finished a, a, a year long pilot plant at SGS in Lakefield, Canada. We've now entered into uh, an MOU agreement with SMS Group, a big German engineering company. Uh, and we're going to look at deploying those initially in, in Europe on a 50-50 uh, joint venture basis so we've and so what we do is the first part of the plant actually makes the battery safe to move around so you know these these batteries uh, you know originally one of the early books on lithium batteries was called can lightning and so the the the, the cells at the end of the life that you know they're never really dead some they, they're varying levels of charge in them so you know we've developed a system to shred them uh, and remove physically what we can before putting the rest into our stage two hydrometallurgy plant. So we've got a number of, of, of safety systems in there to make sure that, you know, it, it, is, it is truly safe to operate. So is it just lithium ion batteries that you recycle or are there any other types? So at this stage, it's initially we designed it for lithium cobaltate batteries, you know, or what's in your, your common laptops and phones. Uh, yeah. We then expanded the, you know, it's, it's more complex to, to process the, uh, the EV batteries. So, you know, yeah. NMC, uh, NCA batteries, LMO. We've steered clear of the, the LFP uh, batteries just, just from the fluorine content. Um, you, you know, they, they do successfully recycle LFP batteries uh, in China. Ganfeng is, is very competent at that. Now, if you're not aware, Gangfeng is one of the largest lithium producers in the world based in China. And it's one of three companies that are currently supplying Tesla with lithium. And the fact that they're already recycling lithium ion phosphate batteries leads me to two questions. Will Tesla partner with Gangfeng to recycle lithium ion phosphate batteries in China? And second, if Tesla or Redwood Materials announce that they're going to do their own battery recycling, will they be able to do both US made NCA and NCM batteries along with lithium ion phosphate batteries that are made in China? Something to keep an eye on, I guess, when watching Battery Day. Anyway, let's get back to the interview. Once you guys, you know, get the lithium ion batteries come into your plant, what's the right. first process like? So the, the first process is it gets fed into a two-stage shredder. So we shred the batteries and make them small. Uh, and then we feed them into the beneficiation. So in the beneficiation circuit, we take out copper uh, and aluminium foils. You take out plastics 
Um, we've got a magnet to remove the steel casing if they're indeed cell uh, format, uh, you know, cylindrical cell format. Uh, then what you've got is you've essentially got a black powder. We've got to dry that. Then we put it into... Um, so that black powder, is that pretty much the anode and cathode that's sort of left over after you've crushed the, and got rid of the plastics? Yep. Correct. And you can get, you know, little bits of plastic and, and little bits of aluminium and stuff like that also in train but generally it's just the the anode and the cathode and uh, then we put that into a leaching solution and then we sequentially take out the base metals the lithium comes out last um, and then we've then we've got uh, our tailings that we take out which is which comes out essentially as a fertilizer funnily enough <laughs> wow yeah didn't know that one yeah so i mean it's 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 just a quirk so you know we we add a chemical there to adjust the ph so that we can take all the base metals out and we're we're left with uh we're left with the solution at the end that you know once you evaporate and crystallize it is actually a fertilizer so once you have the materials say you've got say the lithium say the nickel the graphite are those then battery grade that you can then yeah so with the battery yeah, look, for our nickel and cobalt, we've passed um, the Chinese specs. We're not quite at the top, you know, a Japanese and European spec, but, you know, we're confident that we'll get there in the demonstration plant. So they can they can go back into the cathode uh, loop. Funnily enough, when you digest the, the black mass, because, you know, graphite's just carbon, the carbon won't dissolve. And so, look. It, it's no longer spherical. I mean, your, your acid solution has 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 ripped into that, so it's it's not of a spherical nature. Um, but essentially, we wash and filter that, or we filter it and we wash it, uh, and then dry it. And uh, and we're just working with uh, with a couple of friends on uh, looking to reuse that recovered graphite from recycled batteries. Okay, and with that recycled graphite. Will that is the goal there to make that battery grade, or would you potentially use that graphite to sell it into industry for other purposes? Yeah, look for us, it's uh, it's just trying to display. We we would sell it um, for it. it can't, I don't think it can go. It it could be potentially used uh, by someone else to try to make a battery grade anode, um, but. For for us, we've got an open mind for it. It's just important that it does displace, uh, for us, naturally mined graphite. You know that 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 gets shipped from China or Africa or you know all over the world. And I think we've just got to have um, really try to close the loop and tighten up the supply chains because you know we take Australian you know, lithium concentrates to China to get made into black powder and they go around the world and they mine, you know, cobalt in the DRC and then they take intermediate hydroxides and they fly them back to China. And so, you know, you can end up in, in Europe or North America and, you know, you've got, you've got your little cell there and uh, the ingredients have come from all sorts of exotic places around the world. It seems ridiculous that you would throw it um, in the, I mean, one, if, if they get punctured and stuff, you know, obviously they, they, there's a fire risk, but notwithstanding that, you know, you've got a whole collection of, of base metals that are in an oxide form. And then, so if you put them in a landfill, you know, they could leach into the groundwater. It's just not responsible to not recycle them. I totally agree. I mean, even now kids that are understanding it from a young age, you shouldn't put batteries in the bin. So... Hopefully that's one perception that's going to change over time. Yeah, well, I think, you know, they, they could be uh, very well involved in stewardship programs, you know, in the UK. Um, you know, they, there's a company that we know that sends um, cardboard collection boxes every, I think it's every April or May to 70,000 schools around the UK. Oh. And, and they get the kid to, kids to, to bring in old batteries and, old equipment, you know, and I, and, and funnily enough, it generates a significant volume of material. Cause I asked him, I said, mate, I don't know, where did you get all these batteries from? And he said, uh, you know, you'd laugh at me if I told you, and I said, well, where'd you get them? And he said, kids. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, it's just a different model. It's not yeah. wrong. It's the right <laughs> thing to do. 
No, that's great news. And out of curiosity, do you have any numbers associated with how many cells don't pass the QA process at, say, battery plants? So we work off uh, around 10%. You know, and that's certainly in the commissioning stages, it's far, far higher. You know, it can be plus 30% in the commissioning stages of these battery plants. You know, the the best, allegedly some of the Koreans down around 5%, given that there's so many new plants going around the world and they can't all be run by experienced operators and even the experienced operators have had trouble um, you know, passing uh, certification for some of their new plants. So as new so, plants pop up around the world, it would be really cost effective to have battery recycling next to those plants. So as they, the plants sort of go through their learning process of fine tuning cell production, they can at least recycle those raw materials. Sure. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's, it would be, you know, from a number of aspects, it would be, uh, obviously friendlier uh, on the environment to, to recycle that as buying virgin material. It's, you know, been mined and processed in various locations around the globe. Um, a security of supply issue, safety. I mean, you know, there's a myriad of reasons why you would, uh, why you would do it, you know, close, Certainly close, if if not at the battery plant, then then or the car plant, then the cell plant, or potentially the cathode plant. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, with the Gigafactory, they land all the, the the ingredients at the front end, you know, and and you know, whereas originally, you know, you might make. Uh, the nickel sulfite might might come from Nerilsk and the lithium comes from Ganfeng and they send it to Sumitomo and they make the cathode and then it goes to Panasonic to make the cell and then the cell goes from Japan, you know, over to, to Fremont and goes in a car. The Gigafactory is, is essentially locating Sumitomo and Panasonic in the same shed, you know, yeah. with... You know, and, and you, you drop the foils there and all the other cathode materials and, you know, save on the shipping costs. And I, and I think, you know, it's it's been a winning strategy because, to my mind, I'm not sure that anyone has been capable to produce cells for less per dollars per kilowatt hour than, than Tesla. And once you get under 100 bucks a kilowatt hour or thereabouts, she, she's sort of 85% raw material cost. Yeah. Definitely. No, that makes a lot of sense. So, Chris, I just wanted to say thanks heaps for coming on this show and explaining this process to us. It's a process and topic that we've all been following closely recently with the anticipation of Battery Day. So I just wanted to say thanks again for coming on the show and I hope we can have another chat at some time in the future. You're very welcome, Ivan. And anytime you're on the chat, I'm here. So there you have it, Kinsbursky Brothers, the recycling process, cell failure rates, so much awesome info, thanks to Chris. And I don't know about you guys, but this interview has raised more questions than answers, and I'm going to be taking an even deeper dive into this topic over the coming days and weeks. If you guys have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get those questions answered by the time I do the next video. Finally, a huge shout out to Winston and Pete, along with all our other Patreons that make these episodes possible. So till next time, I'll see you guys soon.